When it comes to effective horror games, catching and keeping the player's attention is the single most important factor in determining how successful it is at being that. What? In anything other than a dark room on a nice big screen close and loud enough to prevent you from coming away with any sense still left working, I've always felt like you're wasting the game, that not paying enough attention means you're not getting all of the experience that the developers spent years of their lives painstakingly tailoring for you, or that I paid $50 retail for. While fast-paced action, racing, or hentai can still just as much be enjoyed and appreciated off and on while on the bus, waiting in line, or to drown out your parents screaming at each other, the patient subtlety and immersion horror games specifically rely on to be considered good can't, although contrary to all of that, they did not let it stop them from fucking trying. A lot. And repeatedly. Everything from touchscreen phones, motion controlled, and early virtual reality consoles were used to try and make horror games work outside of their usual format and environment. None of which actually really did. Unsurprisingly, although at the very least each attempt utilised an interesting enough mechanic which gave it a reason to be on the system it was, whether that being first-person VR, motion-controlled interactivity, or the Nintendo DS's... touchscreen? If nothing else, though, in any case, horror games developed outside of your native region appeals to fears and anxieties that might be exclusive to that culture, offering an interesting glimpse into a relatively alien world. Dimension the Ward, however, was developed in America. Uh, the cover art is nice. That's a fucking lie. <laughs> Dimension the Ward opens in your very own entire hospital room, the finest hospital room that your health insurance covered. It acts as a stretch of nothing to navigate while emotionally coming to terms with the fact that you decided to play a first-person shooter on the DS, and to fully see exactly what you're dealing with here. Because at this point, if I were watching this... I wouldn't be watching this. I'd be citing the music, textures, familiar atmosphere, the fucking reskinned pyramid head, and the title of this video as to why this might have come from someone having once played Silent Hill. Because it did. A lot like how the 1997 PS1 game Croc was put together by over-enthusiastic developers with too much confidence in their abilities to pitch to Nintendo as a Yoshi game, Dimension the Ward was put together by game developer Renegade Kid LLC, at the time famous for having developed nothing to pitch to Konami as a Silent Hill game in the hopes that they accept and grant them the rights to their most famous franchise. They didn't, by the way, clearing that up. So like Croc, it had to awkwardly come out and exist really uncomfortably, because while they can't legally say it, everyone knows exactly what it is. It just has to embarrassingly wear a name that draws attention to its failure, like a fucking dunce cap. For me, though, someone now resorting to squeezing all the Silent Hill residue left from Konami's fucking trash, I'll take it anywhere I can get it. Sign me up. It's a sad existence. And the Silent Hill thing really doesn't help. Hey. Before that though, it was actually pretty impressive to see an opening pre-rendered cutscene, despite it being really forced and obviously intended to establish as much as physically possible in the smallest amount of time it could. Presumably to save on the limited space and the very short attention span of its players. At least that was the intention, it just has it in common with every generic early 90s sitcom opening in existence, so it also comes with a nice little literally unavoidable comparison. A really common theme with these ambitious handheld games is, as much as I don't want to say it and no one's going to want to hear it, but that's never stopped me. You'll point out something like, the field of view doesn't account for enemies on any other plane than your eye level, despite every enemy but one being faster than you and able to get either directly above or below you. And if you want an idea of how painful that is, imagine childbirth like that. And from everyone, the response you'll hear is, but it's on the DS. What do you expect? It's trying. Leave it alone. But in that case, it could just maybe not be on the DS then. I'm not saying I'm against games taking risks trying new things that might not work, despite that being exactly what I said. It's just hard trying to draw a line between an area that would naturally just not work because of the hardware and something the game is doing wrong, especially since there's not many of them to compare it with. So what you can do, like I've already said, is look Look at how the game uses the DS's hardware to justify it being there, which means going on down to the bottom screen. Mm -hmm. 
couple of things going on here. The inventory, options, and map are nothing special, but there is a notepad, and I've expressed exactly how much I genuinely like these before, even though I've never used them properly. Plus, I've always played Silent Hill with a pen and paper anyway, so the main and only attraction is this heartbeat monitor. Go on, impress me. I'm guessing maybe you'll have to take meds to stabilize your heart rate to slow bleeding, or maybe to avoid detection by certain enemies. There could be a risk versus reward type deal, where an adrenaline shots improve your performance but negatively affect your health. Or maybe you're a psychic and can use it like a proximity sensor to detect enemies like the radio static in Silent Hill. No. Nothing. It does fuck all. Really? It's just a bigger, less useful, unclear version of the health bar directly below it that makes the same continuous, loud, annoying sound throughout the entire game? Sure, you can mute the sound in the options menu, but I didn't because I refused to accept they occupied that much space with something that wasn't ever going to be used. I kept thinking that just in the next area, something was gonna happen. Until the next area was the last area. The problem being, when I think about what I'd put there in place of it, I... Uh, yeah, the heart rate monitor works. Under the constant, never-ending heartbeats that I am now hearing in my sleep, though, you've got the voice acting, which is pretty common on the DS, but it's a really good example of it regardless, both in the actual sound quality and in the acting. This is an emergency. Everyone must evacuate the building. Please the nearest stairwell. The music is not an exception either, although it plays on loop constantly and they start reusing a lot of earlier tracks later in the game when they think you've forgotten about them. That's the thing about trying to outsmart me. You will pretty much almost every single time. The whole gang's here. You've got the piano. The choir. That's it. The amount the composer did with that combination, though, is insane. Every song is perfect, and because they only use two instruments, it gives the soundtrack a really specific, unique feel that no other game is going to be able to do now without me associating it with this. By the way, the composer was also the director, designer, and interface artist. What the fuck have you done with your life? Plus, because it's on the DS also means it's crushed as shit, in a way that gives it more personality, as in it's grittier, has more texture, and is a whole new original style of its own because of it, exactly like the graphics. Honestly, I thought the first Silent Hill was the last time I'd ever see this kind of really good-looking, low-res, low-poly, dark, rusty look, but clearly I was just looking in the wrong place like a fucking idiot. I can't promise that would mean much to anyone but me, though, because I full-on cried. Not in a nice way, either. Gameplay is six hours of tediously going through each identical floor of the hospital the game takes place in, trying to open every single locked door to confirm it's locked so that you can check it off your map and try the next one. So basically it's Silent Hill. Except 90% of the rooms don't exist. Not in a cool scary way either, in a fucking shit way. You see every single one of these doors? Yeah, there's no room behind any of them, they're just a flat texture. You can see how many actual rooms there are on each floor in the map. There's a max of four, despite there being like 90 doors. It's garbage. There's probably a really cool easter egg behind one of them that no one has ever found because there's so fucking many. As far as just going around pulling on door handles can be difficult though, the increasingly faster and tougher enemies each room is full of, of which there are only three types by the way, respawn infinitely. Health and ammo items however, does not. So, from the offset, you start the game with the unique and really cool ability to accidentally fuck yourself at any time if you plan on playing the game properly without a walkthrough and just exploring at your own pace. Despite that though, the first three chapters or so are actually really easy to a fault. It's just after the first boss where it jarringly spikes, drops the shit, walks in, goes alright, you've had long enough, and then starts the aforementioned childbirth. If you skip to this part, I have no idea what that sounded like. Technically, there are five bosses in the game, all of which gave me serious grief. Five is a stretch though, but I'll look over the fact that two were just reused because... 
Come on, it's on the DS. What do you expect? It's trying. Leave it alone. I did end up doing it, though. All of it. Reached the end, beat every boss, traversed every level, conquered everything but my parents' expectations of me. And I did it for you. Do you know how many comments I got asking for this? None, I do what I want. So in conclusion, Dimension the Ward is a video game that exists for whatever reason, and where it's good it's good and bad it's bad, specifics of which were covered literally seconds ago. I'm actually happy it does though, not even in a it's better than nothing kind of way, because while it is really rough, it is quality wise absolutely nowhere even close to a lot of Konami's Silent Hill games. That was the compliment.